Hey folks, I am here with the Satmogs crew. These are folks that are part of the Libre Space Foundation, and they've got some really interesting uh, plans to help you build your own uh, ground station uh, at your house. So I'm here with Dan, and he's going to tell us a little bit about those. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm uh, Dan White uh, with Libre Space Foundation. Uh, our first major project was Satnogs, so uh, uh, LSF is kind of the, the organization that keeps the lights on and the servers running. Uh, we're also into spacecraft. We're building open source uh, spacecraft. We're integrating a, uh, uh, eight pocket cubes on a deployer like as we speak. One of our members is, is in flight to that. But uh, I'll talk about what the Satnogs thing is because that's the uh, first way to get uh, involved. This is a receive-only ground station is what Satnogs is, and then they connect up and coordinate together. So you have your own ground station, uh, you set, uh, schedule passes on that station. Because these are networked together, uh, you can schedule time uh, pass on someone else's station also, and then vice versa. So while you're sleeping, you leave the station running, and others can uh, schedule passes on, on your station. Wow, so it's really kind of a crowd-shared network. Yes, yes. So we would, uh, you know, it's ideal is that all of these ground stations on the network are just always listening to something uh, all the time. Uh, like here where we are in Dayton, there's probably 12-ish uh, UHF satellites that are available to listen to right now. Uh, various types, some are commercial, a lot of uh, amateur uh, downlink ones as well. Uh, the Really the easiest way to get started uh, is with a Raspberry Pi and an RTL SDR dongle. Uh, we make an image for the Raspberry Pi, so uh, it includes the operating system and uh, the configuration setup. Then you just log in and add your station number and uh, wow, so really final details. You just flash your, your, uh, your card and, and all the software is there and ready to rock. Yep, ready to go. So we make that uh, image for the Raspberry Pi. You find that at our, our website and in instructions. Uh, the other part, the receiver part, is a RTL SDR dongle. Here, these are the. This is the RTL SDR blog version, uh, but there's other ones that uh, that are nice. Okay, so you've got your Pi there on the left. You got your RTL SDR right there in the center. Yep. There's a lot of dongles out there, right? You yeah. have to identify the right dongle to get in your documentation. Uh, it's not really sensitive uh, to it. All of these uh, dongles, they run the same uh, chip that interacts with the USB port, uh, so they all show up about the same uh, kind of anyway. Okay. The new Alec is another one. Uh, those are fine. Uh, some of the like really, really cheap ones, uh, those don't have very good clock stability. And it's, uh, it's, it works OK, but they're just noisier. Got it. Uh, you really don't need an SDR that's higher performance than that. Any gains that you would get for like actual real world performance are going to be on the uh, antenna and filtering side. Okay. Uh, this is kind of a demo version of a, a beta of a kit that we have. It's not really ready for sale, in the, especially in the US right now. Uh, but a standard setup is for an omnidirectional uh, station uh, is the easiest way to get started. This is a turnstile uh, antenna. Uh, these are all really easy to build uh, by hand. Uh, two dipoles and then a, a quarter wave stub here with coax uh, gets the circular polarization. A lot of these UHF band satellites, they transmit with linear polarized antennas, but you don't know they're tumbling. Uh, in some way. So circular polarization means that you're not hearing, uh, uh, you don't get nulls just because your, your polarization is, isn't lined up. If you're with an aero antenna or something, you're twisting that to get right. the polarization, but if it's automated, then uh, you know, good luck automating that. Okay, great. Uh, this is just a, a low noise amplifier and a bandpass filter. Uh, it really depends on what your location is. If, it's, if you have a lot of uh, interference, uh, then you need a bandpass filter. Uh, it's not strictly required, uh, but in a kit version, you kind of want one that's going to work for someone that buys it. So, uh, you can run uh, with a duplexer. A lot of people have a, v a UHF antenna. They have another VHF antenna. Combine them together. Uh, the receiver only tunes to one of those bands, uh, but now you can listen to, to both bands. 
Okay. Um, and if somebody wants to build this on their own, because your kit's not quite ready, yep. you have the plans for this today? Uh, we have instructions, so uh, satnogs.org is the main website. Our wiki page, which is wiki.satnogs.org, uh, goes right there. Uh, at the header, there's a, a heading that says build. Click on that, click on Raspberry Pi, I think it says. And that's the instructions to find the uh, image to download to flash your uh, SD card. And then also uh, it kind of maps out what your options are for antennas. You can buy a commercial uh, 70 centimeter antenna or, or a two meter antenna. Uh, you can build your own. Uh, it just kind of depends on what, uh, what your budget and, and uh, how sure, much you want to sure. build yourself. I, I had a chance to look at your wiki. It's impressive. It's, you got a lot of great information in that wiki.satlog.org. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, since it's a wiki, it's easy to uh, update and such. And actually, if you find trouble following the wiki instructions, and it's just not making sense. Uh, the wiki makes sense to me because I've done it before, but the wiki exists to help bootstrap you into it. So actually some feedback, uh, I mean, say nice things like, you know, th <laughs> your wiki looks really nice, but the instructions are terrible. Right, right. You know, a little soft start uh, helps. Uh, just for human nature, but sure. uh, you know, we don't have we don't know what first exposure looks like anymore. So some of that feedback is actually really helpful. Our forums are community.libre.space uh, is another uh, link that you can add. That's where our forums are, and that's a great place to ask questions if you run into trouble. You can see lots of activity around uh, new satellite launches. So uh, CubeSats are usually launched in batches of you know sometimes 50 or 100. During those times, all of these satellites are together, so it looks like uh, if there's one station in your area, that's all you need, but actually there might be 50 to listen to at once, and the RTL just can't, can't, can't do that. Uh, so what we do is we track uh, Doppler shift of those signals, and uh, we have a kind of a bi-directional bi relationship with the organizations like Spacetrack that provides orbital elements and maybe half of the time we're the ones providing the positive identification for which object is, uh, which satellite. Uh, and then sometimes we'll provide updated orbital elements that we receive, uh, calculate from observations even on your own station, uh, back to space track, because it's really everybody wants to have uh, accurate uh, TLEs. So you're collecting all this data, getting it sent to a central repository, and then you guys are doing a bunch of cool stuff, visualizing that data, mm -hmm. providing you know that data to lots of different folks, anybody really, right? It's, it's, yep. it's anybody who can use it or needs it. Yep. Um, is that behind you, perhaps, some of that data? Yeah, I'll show you what that is. So uh, upper left corner, this is just uh, the home page of our network, uh, okay. network.satnogs.org. Uh, these are stations that are live uh, right now. Uh, green are schedulable by anybody on the network, and then orange are uh, in testing mode. Okay. Um, once that observation happens, uh, the, the data is uploaded uh, to this. I don't have that page up, uh, but it will show a waterfall you know, like the, the heat map waterfall on a SDR receiver. Uh, it will have a recording of the baseband audio. If it was like an FM satellite, an AMSAT satellite, it'll have that audio uh, already decoded. If this was a telemetry packet and the signal was strong enough, uh, the Raspberry Pi runs those decoders uh, live and it will also archive those packets. If those satellite teams have published what, those what the data means, in those packets, uh, we'll help satellite teams build a dashboard uh, using that. That's this upper right one. Uh, this one is for uh, Green Cube, uh, which has been popular in the last, uh, last few months for sure. And uh, any data that comes in through the network for any of these stations uh, for Green Cube gets added to this data dashboard. A lot of uh, lower budget, like university satellite teams uh, nowadays will use this dashboard. They'll make their dashboard because they know what the data is. Uh, but then that kind of becomes their own operational dashboard. 
When it's over their own site, they'll do their command and control uh, you know, as they need, but that's always uh, custom. And then uh, this network allows you to participate in collecting data for satellite teams and also to track the satellites that you're interested in. The next level requires another zero in the cost, probably. Okay. Um, about 30% of the stations uh, on our network do have full azimuth elevation rotators and, and larger antennas. Um, the Raspberry Pi uh, already is configured to speak uh, what's called Hamlib, which is a, a kind of a base library that kind of every rotator controller talks to. So pretty much every rotator controller uh, that we're aware of talks to Hamlib, and therefore it uh, just uh, just works. So during a pass, uh, this Pi, once you get it hooked up with your rotator, it'll talk to it and control and do the tracking for your rotator. Okay. So if you already have an SL rotator and you use it for you know larger satellite operations, uh, Satnogs is what you do when you're not using it yourself. So the easiest way is you uh, don't even use your uh, your uh, base radio, still use the RTL dongle, but then just switch your antenna feed over to it. Uh, maybe switch the the rotator uh, attachment depending on how that works, and then when you're not at home using it, you can have your rotator track and participate and then of course with the with larger antenna system uh, you get much many more data frames right, and, right, and such right. very cool all right well um anything else that you think we should point out before we wrap it up um i was worried about wearing out my uh, rotator uh, so i have a g5500 on the top of my uh, university building and uh, what actually wore out was it well it's seven eight years old at this point uh, after about a year and a half, one of the rotator cables kind of came pulled out and, and so on from, from the rotation all, all of the time. Once I figured out how to like zip tie it down so it moved only where I wanted it to with a nice you know, loop and, and got the tension out of it, uh, that setup has been going 30% of the time that thing is in motion 24-7 and it's been going for four years. Uh, now how much, uh, how much bandwidth? Do you need to kind of participate, right? If somebody's gonna, you know, use your station, or you know, it's, uh, like myself, I'm out in a rural area and I have a, a wireless ISP. Okay. Right? Yep. So I can't get a gig to the house, right? So how much bandwidth do you need to to be a good participant? Uh, what's useful is the the waterfall. Those are a, a few hundred kilobyte uh, image uh, that comes that gets uplinked. Uh, we do have a setting in the uh, station software to not upload the audio recording, which is, I think it's uh, four and a half megabytes or so for a typical pass. Uh, that's already MP3'd. We use uh, Aug uh, Vorbis uh, encoding, but it's, it's, it's essentially the same. Uh, so if you're on really restricted uplink bandwidth, then you would uh, shut off uh, uploading the audio. Okay, so you can kind of tune it to your capability. Mm -hmm. And for the telemetry satellites, uh, the uplink is no big deal because you know each of those packets are you know a few hundred bytes or, or something right, right. and that's that's where the data from the dashboards comes from okay. so shutting off the audio you you lose um, uh, that archive of uh, an FM satellite or something but it's really uh, it is still full participation okay. well Dan thanks so much for taking some time and explaining sat dogs to us really appreciate it yeah thank you Thank you, great to talk.